Hey, guess what, Uncle Mark? Tell me. Uh, you remember how uh, on episode 58 of this fine show, we uh, Doug tried to confuse us all with the Bible? <laughs> uh, that sounds like so many of our episodes, but right, I'll, take, right. I'll take you at your word. Well, we... Uh, it, it was Doug giving us sort of a rundown, the first rundown of the very obvious acid trip that is Revelation. Right, including my favorite part, which was what to snack on <laughs> right. mid-apocalypse, yeah, which if is some, a little book. If, if, yeah, exactly. If a rainbow-headed guy uh, has one foot in the water and one foot on the land and offers you a book... Mm. Num, 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 num. Dive in. Go, go against everything you've ever been taught in your life and eat that book. <laughs> eat that book. Well, uh, Uncle Doug, you have promised yeah. that, that worse is to come. Well, I, 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 and I'm going to keep my promise. Um, <laughs> yes. Revelations 2. Revelations Part 2. So, yeah, as, as you mentioned, Uncle Dan, in, the, in, in Episode 58, we covered the first half of the book of Revelation, which was the first 11 chapters. Um, and... I'm so, I'm so glad we broke this in half because if we tried to do this all at once, we'd all be on the floor. Um, so you say that like it's a bad thing. Uh, well, it, I'm on the floor. You can't see me. I just <laughs> that sounds like a fun tickle party. I'm lying behind the credenza. Well, just just wait till we get going. So so let's dive in. Um, in episode 58, we covered kind of the history of the Book of Revelation, why it ended up where it ended up, and if you want to you know, re- reorient yourself to that, or if you haven't listened to episode 58, you should go back, because otherwise this will make no sense at all. Well, and then uh, once you have listened to it, it will also make It'll no make sense at all. Less sense. Right. We'll clear all of that not up for you. <laughs> so let's do a quick recap, and then we'll dive right in. So in part one, we met our protagonist, John, who was witnessing and writing down this fever dream. Mm. We also met Swordmouth Jesus, the four and 20 elders, the four six-winged chanting beasts covered with eyes, we were introduced to the seven seals, the four horsemen, and their 200 million mounted cavalry, and the seven trumpeting angels. We saw the sun blotted Who out. Who were repeated. dicks, by the way. <clears throat> Total Those dicks. trumpeting angels were assholes. Yeah, and anti-environmental for sure. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, we saw the sun blotted out repeatedly. We saw several earthquakes, forest fires, scorpion locusts, a prediction about the dangers a planned economy poses to the nuclear infrastructure of an age- aging post-industrialized uh, society. A less creative description of a tank, a helicopter, or a dragon, depending on who you're talking to. And, of course, the 144,000 face-tattooed Jews. Yes. That brings us up to Chapter 12. Right. So that was all the normal stuff. Yeah. Now (laughs) we get into the weird stuff. Everybody knows about that stuff. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, in Chapter 12, if you were hoping for an amuse booklet to start things out, (laughs) sorry, we are jumping in with both feet. Okay. So a heavily pregnant woman appears in the heavens, clothed with the sun and standing on the moon, with the crown with 12 stars. You know how you can wear the moon as clothes? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Say that again. <laughs> no, seriously. A, pr- a pregnant woman. A very pregnant woman appears, clothed in the sun, standing on the moon, with a, tr- a, cr- a crown with 12 stars on it. Sure. You, if, if you're getting hung up by this, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> right. um, next, I did the, just the gravitational consequences of, <laughs> of those choices she's made are stupendous, but whatever. All sure. right. So next there appears... A I'm great, worried about the baby. <laughs> you should. Next there appears a great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns. And that, is, that has been interpreted to be an aircraft carrier. Right. <laughs> is that right? I, that's pretty good. Now, this means that either one of this thing's heads has 10 horns or that each head has 1.4 horns. Take your pick. Oh, uh, uh, you know, you can, have a, you can have heads that have different numbers of horns. Or, or that. Look, th- based, <laughs> so dumb. based on the very subtle more is more nature of this narrative, right. I'm going to go with 10 horns apiece. Right. Yeah. Um, so in a deft move, this dragon uses its tail to gather up a third of the stars in heaven and cast them down. And then that's it, how stars work. God, exactly. These guys are really good at celestial bodies. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And then he crouches in front of the woman's vagina, getting ready to devour the baby <laughs> as it's being born. Oh. Don't worry. Dear heaven. The baby, whose destiny is to rule all nations with an iron rod, is pulled up to heaven, and the woman flees into the wilderness where she's given plenty to eat for 1,260 days. <laughs> So wait a minute. The 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 dragon is there like a catcher's mitt right. waiting for this baby to come out. But the baby doesn't come out of her poos. No, it comes out and is immediately snatched up by the by the, by God. Oh, I thought it went it out goes, through her it mouth. Goes, no. It goes through one of those pneumatic tubes. Right. Straight to heaven. 
Yeah. Boom. It came out under such high velocity, it just blew a hole right in the back of the dragon's head. <laughs> exactly. And then One mom, of the heads. mom went off to have a bite. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and again, just to, for emphasis, I am not, I'm actually trying to simplify some of this and make it easier to understand. Now, a war breaks out in heaven between the forces led by some new dude named Michael and the forces led by the dragon. That old quote, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So Satan loses, predictably, and is cast out along with his followers, which has been interpreted to be about a third of the population of heaven. So Satan managed to rally a third of the hosts of heaven to his cause. Which is so weird, because yeah. you would think that God would have an effective marketing team, but no. No. Not, not really. And luckily, a nice little bedtime story about 33% of some indeterminate population turned devil worshippers full of hate from their defeat, being cast upon the face of the earth to torment and do all manner of evil to the human race, hasn't caused any problems at all. No, um, it's just a footnote. It's, it's just, just a footnote to a great story. Well, the worst thing about this story so far is that it set the precedent of only winning 33% of the popular vote, but still somehow winning the Electoral College. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> uh, our angry Satan seeks to find and persecute the woman from before, but she is given eagle wings to fly away. Oh, wait. <laughs> This is the woman who shot the baby out. Yep. She's off in the wilderness at her buffet. Having a buffet. Why didn't they give her eagle wings to begin with? I, good, great question. And if you're dressed in the sun, like, eagle wings to me seem a downgrade? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, bird. She probably right. lost that. Bird wings. Outfit. So uh, she gets these eagle wings and she flies back to her buffet to be nourished, quote, for a time and times and half a time. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. So Satan uh, and apparently we are obsessed with getting food in this lady. I know it's what true. F- nourished for what? It's Why? True. I honestly think so much of this narrative was written before lunch because <laughs> he just John just had food just. on the brain. <laughs> ah, what's, what is there to eat in this well, cave? I, the woman's fine. She's got the wings, but what is she eating? <laughs> well, so there's now winged woman. Satan is chasing her and barfs out a flood to try and drown her. Even okay. though she can fly. Satan does. He the, the yeah. Satan barfs out a flood. Okay. Uh, but the earth opens up to swallow the flood, saving her, even though she can fly. Right. So Satan, madder than ever, it sets out. It was an air to... flood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Satan sets out to wage war against the seed of the well fed eagle woman. So mm. that is chapter 12. Chapter 13 opens with John on the beach watching a new seven headed beast with ten horns and seven crowns rise, at, rise out of the sea. But this, this time he notices a tattoo on each of the heads that says blasphemy. Oh my God. <laughs> can I just say that if Terry Gilliam. Saw right. an animation of this, he'd go, you've gone too far. You dial this back. Okay. I would love to see a, a Gilliam-produced version of No Revelation. doubt. Right? That would be really oh. terrific. Really kind of the only guy who could do it. No I doubt. Think so. Yeah, I agree. So, how's this beast diff- different from the one in Chapter 12, you ask? Well, this one is like a leopard with bare feet. Bare feet. Like, not bare feet. Like feet of the, feet of the animal, of the ba- the bear. A, a bear. Yes. Okay. And a lion's mouth, which that, differs that, from a leopard's mouth in some substantial way, apparently. Yes. You want to take a super fast animal and put some <laughs> giant ass, plump, <laughs> heavy feet on it. Right. Okay. So the seven headed dragon beast then transfers his powers to the seven headed leopard bear lion beast. As you do. John sees one of the beast's heads appear to be mortally wounded. Like, of, like through power of attorney? Like how do they transfer just, the I power? Know. It's just he it's gave a, him all his power. It's a Pokemon thing. You wouldn't get it. Okay. Totally. I don't get it. John notices that one of the beast's heads is mortally wounded, but then it's healed, and the world collectively wonders what the fuck is going on. <laughs> so it wasn't mortally wounded at all. No. It, was, it, was, it wasn't. It was Totally and, fine. So everyone takes to worshiping the beast, saying to one another, quote, who is likened to the beast and who is able to make war with him? Okay. As you do. So the well, beast begins to talk at this point, spouting blasphemies and vulgarities for 42 months. <laughs> I kind of like this beast. I'm going to go on record as being I'm beast positive. And apparently, I don't know if you guys know this, the math has changed because I have been told by people on Twitter that 42 is divisible by seven. So by that's seven. Dif- yes, that's yeah. different now. Mm. So each of the seven heads could blaspheme yeah, all right. six blasphemies each. Well, the others take a break. Yeah. A sure. Little, a little nosh. Yeah. So the leopard beast is given great power over the earth to subjugate everyone and force them to worship him. And now John sees another beast coming out of the earth with two lamb's horns and the voice of a dragon. Uh, the third sure. beast is given great power to that's subjugate. That's the whole description. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, do lambs have horns? I would think you'd have that's to a like good, that's a good get question. a little older. 
For, anyway, I, um, I'm not sheep well versed in sheep. Okay, you guys are going to follow along with this very easily. I can tell Good. this third beast is given great power to subjugate everyone and force them to continue worshiping the second beast. <laughs> The third beast tells mankind to make a statue of the you second know, beast. Which fucking Star Wars movie was all in the Senate? <laughs> exactly. Which one was that? Exactly. This is turning into, <laughs> is there a motion on the floor? No, it's a doubt. Uh, I, as beast number two, make a motion that all worship should be of beast number one. <laughs> and I had to go back and read these scriptures over, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so, the third beast tells mankind to make a statue of the second beast, no. which the third beast then brings to life, so it no. Can kill everyone not al- already worshiping the first, second, or third beast, or the animated statue of the second beast. Are you the gatekeeper? <laughs> I'm the key master. <laughs> so uh, then he. This and, is uh, the most confusing <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> I can imagine, like, you're, you're running to a cave that you've begged to collapse on you, and that doesn't happen, and then you're just halfway through eating your book, and you're like, Who's, which beast is in charge now? I was just buying wheat from the Black Horseman. It is baffling. It's baffling. All right. And it's supposed so, to be scary, right? I know, right? <laughs> so, is it supposed to be scary? I, it, I part think of it's it supposed to be scary. It feels kind of like, like it's lost the plot of scary altogether. It's just... How weird can we go? Uh, exactly. Okay, totally. so then one of these beasts, not quite sure which uh, one at this point, forces mankind to take a, take on a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads. This is oh, we this is the scary mark, yep. the mark of the beast. We finally get, <clears throat> and it's an actual beast. I never realized that the mark of the beast. It's yeah. not. I always thought that that was Satan. But no, it's, it's an a, actual like physical critter, and I'm not sure it's which it, one of them. It doesn't. It's unclear. I need to know. <laughs> it's unclear which of the beasts makes makes the. Okay, so the mark you take is either the name of the beast or the number of the name of the beast, which is six hundred and three score and six. Right, six 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 six. six, six. But it's unclear which of the three beasts whose name this is. I, I've I, also I wondered, saying. and no one's ever explained this to me. Why does it have a number? Do you guys have a number? No. I don't have a number. Why does a that, social why does security it... number. Hold on. <laughs> but um bum Well, and also, where was I reading? There was some biblical scholarship that re uh, reinterpreted this stuff, and the, the number of the beast is actually 616. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, Uncle Doug has proven that guy wrong. I mean, that's the cutting edge <laughs> of biblical thinking. Boom. 600, <laughs> three score, and six. That's that's just somebody who doesn't know what a score is. is someone what... who doesn't, yeah, likes the long version, who's not into the whole brevity thing. Right. Uh, okay, so you are not allowed to buy or sell without this mark. So that's why you have to, and that's you, all of this New World Order bullshit derives right. from this. Right, this right. Here. Okay. So now we're in the chapter 14. Re- remember, there was a big, when When did barcodes come along? In 19... Yeah, it was in the early 90s. No, it was no, before 80s, that. I think. I think it was the early 80s. And yeah. that, that caused the evangelicals to absolutely... I remember that. ...poop their pants. Mark of the Beast, Mark yeah. of the Beast. It's, the Mark of the Beast is a bunch of lines. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so chapter 14 starts out with Jesus standing on Mount Zion with the 144,000 uh, with his father's name on their foreheads. Okay. These turn out to be guileless virgins. Because that's a thing. Well, what you don't Where did want... they come from? <laughs> they, were, they were hanging out somewhere well, else for a while. <laughs> what you don't like is those virgins that have all that guile. <laughs> Too much guile. <laughs> so I'm John, out of here. John, so isn't that the 144,000 yeah. elect? But now they're guileless... I don't now know. they're guileless virgins with tattoos on their foreheads. Because that's a thing. Yeah. Okay, right. great. <laughs> so John hears a booming voice like unto thunder or, quote, the voice of harpers harping with their harps. <laughs> If we've he, had we look. We've had trumpet voices before. It's nice to switch to a nice harp. I cannot think of two sounds more not the same. Similar than thunder and a harp. Thunder and a harp. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm only hearing one kind of harp in my life. Yeah, know. you need to hear those really good thunder harps. harp. <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, look for our album. Uh, we we have a new. Uh, we're going to start a new heavy metal band called Thunder Harp. Our, <laughs> Our album will drop uh, next week. <laughs> so John sees another angel flying in the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel in his hands to preach to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, screaming, quote, fear God and give glory to him. This is Moroni. According to Mormon lore, this is the oh. angel Moroni. So, yeah, he's, he's mentioned in Revelation. And he's so the angel, the golden angel you see on the top of the temples is the angel Mormon Moroni. Temples. Mormon wow. temples, yeah. yeah, who brought the Book of Mormon to Joseph Smith. They Mormons believe that and that's Joseph who this Smith is ate it. Yep. <laughs> so okay, well that's good. This is like 
kind of so, reverse engineering a new narrative. This is yeah. like Rogue One. Right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Love it. So behind him comes another angel screaming, quote, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Trigger warning, post-fornication discharge is going to be a major factor of this story going forward. Yep. Well, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you had me until that. <laughs> Behind him comes a third angel screaming that if anyone worships the beast or gets his mark, he shall burn day and night and be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of Jesus and the angels. Wait, now you tell me this now? I, I already got the mark like, tw- like 20 minutes ago. What are you doing? Laser tattoo removal had not been invented yet. Uh... John sees a man who looks suspiciously like Jesus sitting on a throne on a cloud with a golden crown and a sickle. An angel <laughs> oh. eggs this character on to reap the earth with a sickle, which he does. <laughs> Another angel comes Wait, out of the temple. How does he reap the earth? It's, he jams his sickle into the earth or and, does he, and or, reaps it. Or does he just go to all of the fields? It just, says, just it literally sh- says he plunged his sickle into the earth and reaped it. Okay. I, think, I think it might have meant rape. It's I don't very, know. Very well cut That's because that's not how reaping works. No, reaping is you just swing. Uh, you're, yeah, you're, 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 swing. Just, you're just getting, getting the grain. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm the field is you. white. Yeah. <laughs> Another angel comes out of the temple with a sickle of his very own, and another angel eggs him on to thrust his sharp sickle into the earth and gather the vines for God's enormous cosmic wine press of wrath, which he does. No, no, also, no, 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 no. Sickles are not how you get the grapes. This is wait. This is bad. This is bad farming. Say, read what you just read. Uh, okay. <laughs> another angel comes out of the temple with a sickle of his own. Yes. Another angel eggs him on. To uh, g- use his sickle to gather the vines for God's enormous cosmic wine press of wrath. Yeah. Okay. You're, are you I, not? Is this not clear? I'm just, so this is the worst farming he, ever. He does that, and so much blood issues forth from the wine press that it rises to the depth of a horse's bridle, and okay, covers. Well, that an, is not supposed to happen in winery. It no. Covers an area of vintners. Num, dum. <laughs> And then this blood covers an area of 6,600 furlongs, which is somewhere in the vicinity of 825 square miles. Or not, don't at me. I don't care. (laughs) Um, Chapter 15 is mercilessly short and consists mostly of various groups of people singing praises. However, we are introduced to seven new angels wearing white linen and golden girdles with seven... (laughs) On their paps! (laughs) With seven plagues ready to be loosed on the earth, uh, for, which for some reason still hasn't gotten what it deserves. Which also, by the way, before you started telling me this this whole story, the appearance of angels would have sounded like a welcome thing yeah, to me. No, it is. I'm terrified of angels now. <laughs> See, it is scary. Angels are the most scary thing in this book. And there is there is such a level of sadism. Oh my god! In this, whatever the people of Earth or the Earth deserve. Yeah. Like, what in the fuck did, has anybody done to deserve this kind of nightmare? Right, right. over them, killing them and killing them and yeah. killing them. And not for nothing, I am more afraid of angels than I am of beasts <laughs> at this point. <laughs> well, like, they've done far more damage. I think we need to be specific about which beasts and which angels, but we can do that on another right. show. I don't, I don't have the brain power for that kind I of processing. I can't keep track. Jesus. Like, my whiteboard is a mess. <laughs> Um, as chapter 16 begins, these seven angels are told to go forth and pour out their vials of plague upon the earth. As you do. And as, as, as is always the case in this fucking book, we're going to go through these one by one. Oh, goody. The first angel pours out his vial and it causes sores among the worshippers of the beast. Yay. The second angel pours his vial and turns the sea to blood for the second time. Well, he only turned a third of it. The That's first true. Time, remember? Oh, so um, now the whole sea. Now the whole sea. Okay. All sea life dies. The third angel turns his vial, uh, pours out his vial, and all rivers turn to blood. Can I just interrupt one sec? Yeah, I don't know if you guys got this growing up, but it was said in in our Mormon church more than once that chemically, the closest substance in the world oh, to blood oh, yeah. shut up. is seawater. I remember. Yeah, oh, I remember my that. God. Did you ever hear that, Dan? Sh- no. It, it was shut the fuck up. And it was up. one of those like, oh my god, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. whoa. Yeah, you know, because it's true. <laughs> Cause it only takes a little bit. To turn that seawater into blood. Yeah. But it is more tricky to do the rivers, which is what you just yeah. did. So the third angel turns the rivers to blood, mm. and the third angel is doing it. While he's doing it, he's saying how awesome it is that men have to drink blood now. And then Chris Angel <laughs> came. <laughs> and, uh, the, and said, this is too freaky for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the fourth angel's vial, uh, he turns over his vial, and in a shocking twist, it makes the sun brighter and hotter, so it scorches everyone. Oh, good. But don't worry, because the fifth angel's vial causes darkness. <laughs> Nobody can agree. Such competing a, vials, competing yeah. vials. Uh, the darkness is so terrible that men chew their own tongues and curse God. 
Wait. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. When you don't have. What, what does that sound like? <laughs> 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 Uh, the six angels' vial dries up the Euphrates River, which is strangely specific. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like after some massively impressive Copperfield illusion, you do a like a little card trick, you, yeah. you pull a coin out from right. somebody's. <laughs> the wand turns into a little bouquet. <laughs> Poof. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, now the dragon beast and presumably the leopard beast, along with the, a new character, the false prophet. Which too, uh, it's too late in the narrative for new people. <laughs> the, the the false prophet could be the lamb horn beast, but who fuck cares the, they barf up three frog-like spirits <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah no. yeah no. Um, these fr- I, I summon frog yeah. <laughs> oh again it's like you, you build from small to big right i know i know <laughs> in these narratives what what can we conjure up that will stop these uh, the- these these angels from Pestilencing the whole universe, Blech, frog. Right in the second act, we had multiple seven-headed giant motherfuckers right. with all the animal parts. <laughs> and as we build towards the finale, it's like ribbit, <laughs> <laughs> a tree frog. I don't know whether to be scared or laugh. I, What's it's happening? So silly. It's like a Korean horror movie. <laughs> We've never worked a Pulgasari reference into this podcast yet. A Pulgasari. Oh, um, so these frog-like spirits use miracles to gather up all the kings of the earth to a place called Armageddon. Yay! Wait, are the frog? I thought they were bad guys. They are. They're on the bad team. They are. But they've okay. They 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 gather up the wicked kings of the earth. They're team beast. They're, 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 they're being okay. taking Armageddon to be smashed. Okay. Okay. So at this point, the seventh angel pours out his vial, which causes a great voice to boom out from the temple, saying, "It is done." <laughs> just, that's a and shitty, then there's, there's like seven more chapters bio. it's not done what is it I don't no, know what to tell it you it is done bah! <laughs> okay after it is done the biggest earthquake of all happens causing the great city to break into three pieces the islands to flee and the mountains to get lost <laughs> the mountains get lost and no one can find them did you guys play Dungeons and Dragons as a kid <laughs> okay. Did you guys play that? <sighs> yeah, 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 a little bit. This is like this is like when your your dragon master is this fucking weird ass kid who's <laughs> never read any of the your dungeon master has never read any of the stuff. He's yeah, he doesn't know the rules. He's just making it up. Yeah, it, but he's also high as fuck. Yeah, right high fuck. as fuck. Or he's having a blood sugar emergency. I run to the <laughs> mountains. You can't find them. Why Whoa. not? Uh, they're lost. <laughs> I killed the seven headed beast. <laughs> well. Here's a frog. <laughs> exactly. What? I, uh, I, I roll to, to, to birth out a, a, a protector. Oh, you rolled a two. You got a frog. <laughs> frog. Oh, I rolled a 19. Oh, you have to go to the forest and eat a buffet for 42 months. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so chapter 16 ends with, tal- with talent-sized hailstones pummeling the worshippers of the beast. Okay. A talent being about 75 pounds, depending on who you ask. Oh, really? Yeah. Whoa. Chapter 17 begins with one of the angels that had the vials coming up to John and saying, you want to see some shit? <laughs> so, so he shows John. Hey, man. Check this out. <laughs> totally. He shows John a woman sitting on a scarlet colored beast in the sea with seven heads and ten horns. No more beast. It's not clear if this is the dragon beast, the leopard beast, or some new beast. Right. She is wearing scarlet robes, a shit ton of jewelry, and has a cup full of, quote, abominations and filthiness of her fornications. A uh, cup full? Yeah. That's pretty gross. Oh, my God. But she's also on, in the sea of blood. She's, you know, she's on a different sea. Well, I guess it's the sea All of blood. the seas are blood. That's true. Maybe they made it. Maybe that's, that's how they made it blood. Ugh. And maybe she's just into that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she, not going to kink shame whoever this woman exactly. is. Exactly. Is this uh, the Whore of Babylon? This is the Whore of Babylon. Uh, on her forehead is the rather unfortunate all caps tattoo, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. Wait, that whole thing is tattooed on her? On her forehead. So okay. it's, like, it's either She's, over her whole face or very tiny she, font. Remember Kristen Wig on SNL? She would do that <laughs> character really with the little hands. That's right. She, she, the forehead. Forehead. She, like, she was the weird whore of Babylon. Oh so John gosh. notices that she is stupid drunk on the blood of the martyrs and asks himself what the fuck is going on. The angel hears John's internal monologue and tells them he can clear things up. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Great. This is going to clarify everything. The angel says the beast, the beast both exists and does not exist. And when people see the beast, they will wonder if their names are included in the celestial white pages. Now, the seven heads represent the seven mountains, clearly the seven hills of Rome, which the woman sits upon. 
The seven heads also represent seven kings, five of which are dead, one is currently reigning, and one will come along one day. The beast is the eighth, eighth of these seven kings, but is also one of the seven kings. No, no. <laughs> I see your problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> we've uh, we've got we we need to remath this one. It is so Here, maddening. Here's the thing about symbolism: <laughs> it has to symbolize something clearly. Well, and, right? and it, not it, everything can be symbolism. But you have to have a story somewhere, right? Yeah. Well, everything in this is clearly symbolism. Yeah. But from a person well, who didn't understand what that means, right? But thank God we actually got we've actually gotten to a point where things are starting to refer to something specific, right? So, like, that's nice. I don't know if you say so. So does it say uh, the like the seven hills of Rome in the? It in, doesn't, in but it, 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 it's very commonly believed that the that the whore of Babylon and uh, the whore of Babylon and Babylon are not only Babylon, they're also Rome, and the God seven damn. heads and seven hills and seven churches all fold into each right. other. And so jumping to the end, yeah, this is if this is anything, if Revelation written in the cave in Patmos is anything, yeah. it is about geopolitics in the Mediterranean. Precisely. Basin at the fucking time. At the time. In the same way that Nebuchadnezzar's dream in the book of Daniel, Mm -hmm. that everybody tries to read all this fucking significance into, is stated in the book of Daniel about current geopolitics. Exactly. That's exactly right. Right. It it could not have less to do with our modern day than any of the rest of the Bible, I suppose. Right. Right. Okay. So the angel keeps explaining that the ten horns represent ten other kings that don't have kingdoms but get to be king for an hour each. No! <laughs> that's not a king! We, we went back. We, I think we backtracked. I think we backslid. We were trying to, we were trying to reference real things, and then we, then we, oh, we lost the How plot. do you live at this time and not know how kings work? <laughs> uh, these ten, these ten one-hour kings will wage war against the lamb. <laughs> but we'll, king for an hour. We'll lose. Guess, you, look, I got, I got an hour. Let's take 15 minutes and plan the war. We'll launch. We'll, we'll launch our campaign for the next half hour to forty-five. And I would hopefully like, we'll win. I would like a feast. Can I have that? <laughs> Short may they reign. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They lose the war against the Lamb because of the whole King of King and Lord of Lords thing. Yeah. Well, uh, so you can't wage a campaign in an hour. Exactly. Um, however, although the horns are meant to represent these ten kings, these ten horns will also come to life themselves, sure. hate the whore, steal her clothes, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Cleared up? Okay. Obviously. The water that she rose up from also represents all of the people of the earth, and she herself, if it wasn't clear from the enormous face tattoo, represents Babylon. Yeah. <laughs> and chapter 17. Why does it say mystery on her? I don't know. Head? It says mystery, comma, because, Babylon the Great. Because none of this makes any sense, right. and it's all a mystery, and you might as well, I'm going to tattoo that on my forehead right. as soon as we're done. Well, and then it says mystery, and then below that, the mystery is completely cleared up. This is who I am. Hey. <laughs> In the words of Sarah McLaughlin, we're building a mystery. Is this thing on? Hello? I, th- it's not on, apparently. <laughs> well, no. What's amazing is that like, you're the one in this group that knows more Sarah McLaughlin than anybody else, apparently. So there you go. I know one song. You, sir, are in the arms of the angel. <laughs> Chapter 18 starts Which out Which is with... where I would not want to be. <laughs> no. Based on this totally. story. I, we've got to save all those dogs. <laughs> 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 From these fucking freaking murder angels. Yeah. Um, speaking of angels, chapter 18 starts out with another angel screaming at the top of his lungs saying, quote, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. <laughs> <laughs> is it haunted by ostriches? <laughs> the greater like and Lilith? lesser owl. A cage for every, every what bird? Every, every hateful, every unclean and hateful bird. <laughs> The Ossifrage. Hateful bird. And the, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, he Ossifrage. goes on to say, For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, ew, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Sure. Okay. What, what happens next can only be described as extreme slut shaming. Where are the frogs? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go, we just did some, some oh, pretty it, solid slut shaming. It gets so much worse. All it right, goes good. on and on. Thank God. Once again, they go on and on about cups full of fornication fluid. And uh, she ends up in ashes. Uh-huh. People, okay, people have their children read this book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and leaving aside just the murder, like... Families read this book together. Fornication fluid? Fornica- cops full of it. Um, there is a very... Unexpl- I think I saw that video one time. Uh, I almost referenced that. Two beasts, one cup, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nine beasts, ten kings, three frogs, <laughs> one cup. Uh, there is a very unexpected consequence of her getting shamed and burned, and that is that nobody wants to buy stuff from merchants anymore. <laughs> 
wait, there's still there's still <laughs> commerce. <laughs> oh. People are still buying oh, things. Uncle Literally, Mark. everything like the 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 forests have been burned. The sea the is blood. The sea is blood. <laughs> the mountains have run away. The sun is on and off. And meanwhile, there's one guy going corn for sale. <laughs> exactly. Who oh, will buy my pears? My dear uncles, if. It, it, <laughs> Yeah, so nobody <laughs> nobody wants to buy stuff from merchants anymore. What kind of stuff? Well, oh, an apocalypse it, will cause a sluggish economy. Well, <laughs> in a level of granularity that can only be described as Levitical, <laughs> the stuff that nobody wants to buy anymore is gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, silk, <laughs> purple and scarlet, what? just the colors, <laughs> tine wood, ivory cups, wood cups, brass cups, oh. iron cups, and marble cups. <laughs> Ivory cups, wood cups, I've got your uh, brass cups here. I really got out, out over my skis when I bought all these wood cups for the shop. <laughs> and, uh, and we're not done. Nobody wants to buy cinnamon, odors, ointments, fra- uh, frankincense. Now, hold on. I would think ointments would be selling like hotcakes <laughs> right? because no, half right. the people are on fire. <laughs> no, because you know what? The tincture, tincture guy has a whole corner on the market now. Does he? <laughs> yeah. Um, Ointment uh, guy is completely out of business. Oh, my God. Also, wine, oil, flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves, and the souls of men. Nobody wants to buy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> souls. With flour. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my it is a Jesus difficult Christ. time to be in the soul business. I can see not wanting to buy flour because it's like, oh, I got to take it home. I got to get some <laughs> eggs. I got the water. Oh, and then but who doesn't want a soul? And, oh, then, I, and then I can't let it rise. <laughs> It, oh, okay. wow. That is <clears throat> quite remarkable. It was an odd divergence. So the sailors, craftsmen, and merchants watch uh, the city where they made their fortunes be destroyed in a single hour and weep and wail as they should. The angels watch the wailing of these people and rejoice as they should not. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. uh, this brings us to chapter 19. Like, which, how is there anything left? I know, right? It just, it yeah. Was, it Every was, time you bring up a new thing, I'm like, where? How? It was pages ago that the men of the earth ran into caves and begged them to collapse. Exactly. And, and, we're, and, and since then have been destroyed like 10 more times. Yeah. Meanwhile, every single person that we're talking about has a, a, a scorpion yeah. locust just stinging it. <laughs> <laughs> stinging <laughs> for no Helicopter reason. horse thing. <laughs> All right. So chapter 19 starts out with another massive circle jerk as multitudes praise God. The 24 elders and four beasts praise God and chant. And everyone slut shames that damn whore. And suddenly we're at a wedding. Oh, um, hooray! <laughs> she, 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 fuck that. Uh, oh. Jesus is getting married to some woman all dressed in white. And just when it seems that this is the direction we'll be going from here on out, the heavens open and John sees another white horse. The rider of the white horse is named either Faithful and True or the Word of God, depending on which verse you're reading. Okay. The writer has written on so it's him. So different names in the same in the same. Two way. verses apart. Sure. Why not? Uh, the the writer has a name written on him that no one knows, or the name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, <laughs> depending on which verse you're reading. Now John sees another. Wait, wait, what was tattooed on his forehead? It, actually, uh, the the name was tattooed on his thigh. Ah! <laughs> uh, now John on the, sees on the forehead. It said Thug Life. <laughs> John sees another You know what? Angel. If Tupac came into this whole thing, <laughs> yeah. I don't think any of us would be that I know, surprised. Right? No doubt. I would be interested. Okay. John sees another angel uh, who calls all the birds of the earth to a feast where the birds will eat all the people and horses of the earth. The white rider then casts the beasts and false prophets into a lake of fire and kills all of their followers with a sword from his mouth. Finally. Because. And the birds commence to feast on their flesh. Sure. There's still birds. Great. There is a, there is a bird phobic... I know, Five. right? <laughs> Through the entire Bible. I'm just realizing how fucking much these people were so freaked true. out by birds. Look, Hitchcock was not playing on nothing. That's, That's true. true. He was a biblical scholar. We all know that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Chapter 20 begins with another angel bounding the beast with chains and throwing him down to a pit for a thousand years. Which beast? Uh, the. This, this, yeah, the, the beast. Okay. Uh, at which point he will be loosed for, quote, a little season. <laughs> so, <laughs> fall is short. I know, right? The Please. souls of those who did not worship the beast or take his mark will reign with Jesus for a thousand years, at which point there will be the first resurrection. Okay. As Satan is led out of prison at this point, he once again deceives all the nations, gathers his forces, which number as the sands of the sea, and surrounds the saints at a place called Gog and Magog. Right. Of course. Jesus rains okay. fire on okay, them. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Everything leading up to this just doesn't matter I know, anymore. right? It just doesn't matter anymore because... I know. It's, yeah. st- it's like starting over. It's like starting over. Yeah, now literally, we've hit reset. 
Yeah. And now the seas are okay. They're not blood anymore. And all I these guess. people at Mag and Magog have kind of forgotten about all this stuff mm-hmm. and can be fooled again. Yep. And everybody. Uh, oh my I god. Know. So uh, predictably, Jesus rains fire on all of these bad people, destroys them, and casts Satan back into the pit forever. Which could have happened at the beginning of the book. Chapter one. Yeah. Okay. It's flabby. Now God sits upon. (laughs) Yeah, I know. God sits upon a great white throne, and all of the dead are brought before him to be judged, whether they were buried in the land or the sea or they were in hell. Now, if your name is not in the aforementioned galactic white pages, you are not worthy and are cast into a lake of fire. Chapter 21. We're almost there. Oh, my God. John beholds a new heaven and a new earth because it seems like the old one done got burned up in the previous (laughs) chapters. They kicked it around pretty hard. Uh, There's a new Jerusalem where all the saints will live free of sorrow, death, and pain. God God sums up the show so far to John. Basically, worship me and everything will be great. Don't, and it will go very badly for you. Then another one of the angels that had the vials comes up to John and says, you want to see some shit? (laughs) <laughs> so he, at which point you say no know, right he shows john the aforementioned bride which is about to marry jesus the bride turns out to be a crystalline version of the city of jerusalem on top of a high mountain okay <laughs> oh my god it's gonna get worse jesus <laughs> is going to marry a railroad train model <laughs> I'm sorry i'm sorry i want out of this as badly as you do <laughs> This version of the city has three gates on all four sides, manned by 12 angels with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, with 12 foundations with the names of the 12 apostles written on them. Presumably, Judas was scratched out and Matthias was written in in Sharpie. (laughs) The angel takes to measuring the city's dimensions, as you do. Why? It turns out to to be 12,000 furlongs to a side, which is about 1,500 miles. And wouldn't you know it, it's exactly 12,000 furlongs tall. Of course That's it is. right. <laughs> Jerusalem is a giant crystal cube. Oh my god. It's a borg. How long is twi- how long how long was this? 1500 time? miles. 1500 miles. miles. It's 1500 miles tall. tall. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay, the however, the wall surrounding the city is only 144 cubits tall, which is about 72 yards. For anybody who thinks that math makes for a gripping narrative, <laughs> I know <laughs> it doesn't. Let me tell you about the measurements though. I, I mean, know. it's a, it's made of crystal and it's it might be cool to behold. But first of all, let me just uh, let me just some furlongs. Look, Furlong you, this out. If you lived through however many fucking chapters of this insane time, <laughs> and what you kept through it all was your tape measure, I guess I salute you. I know. That's a weird thing to keep. But uh, okay, so the wall appears to be pure jasper, uh, while the city now appears to be pure gold and clear glass at the same time. Yeah, <sighs> the twelve foundations are made up of twelve different precious stones. And we're going to name them. So they oh, are. Thank God. Jasper, sapphire, chalcedony, emerald, sardonyx, sardius, chrysolite, beryl, topaz, chrysoprasus, jacinth, and amethyst. <laughs> my, okay. my original rap name was going to be chrysoprasus. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, the gates are made of pearl and the streets are made of gold. There is no night. There's no need for the sun or the moon because the whole fucking thing glows all the time. <laughs> There's no need for a temple because everyone who dwells there is constantly in the presence of God and his son. Guys, it's chapter 22. It's the last chapter. Uh. John sees a river with trees of life which bear 12 fruits, one for every month. Everyone in the city will have their faces tattooed and will have no need for candles because, as I said, everything glows. Oh, my God. Jesus spends several verses emphasizing over and over that everything that John has seen is just about to happen any day now. Don't buy any green bananas. He admonishes everyone. He, he admonishes that no one should add or subtract from this book, and he ends it all with something I have said all too many times: "Surely I come quickly." Oh. Hey, <laughs> fucking men! Holy shit! That is so insane, and it's I am again fucking literally exhausted. It's uh-huh. exhausting just to hear it. It's can exhausting. I just, can I just say about that last little bit, by mm-hmm. the way, that my dad once pointed out to me the fact that. It does say in Revelation, no, don't add to this book, and we were Mormons. I know, right? Uh, right. <laughs> there was, we had a whole other book. I know. Your dad pointed that out. Yeah, and, uh, and he just sort of chuckled. Yeah. Well, it, I guess it's that, that old saw that something like this clearly basically means nothing so that it can mean anything. <sighs> right. Right. Exactly. And, and the, the nightmarish reality that people in our society – people around the world who have important positions yeah. think there's some kind of meaning here 
uh, that pertains to nuclear arsenals and yeah. military buildups. It's and, fucking terrifying. Yeah, in international politics. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's freakish. It makes the rest of the Bible seem coherent. I, well, maybe I, that's the point. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Maybe that's the point. Close with a weird dream sequence. And then everybody's like, oh, well, I thought I was confused before. But it, now I think I'm not. It now, is, yeah, it is totally the final scene in Requiem for a Dream, isn't it? It's yeah. just, fuck. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, I'm taking a month off. The best part about this is that it's over. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks anyone who's still listening, <laughs> which is probably no one. And, no, I, I, and apologies, please. I'm sorry. No, it's a beautiful uh, thing that we've done, which is make it absolutely clear that there is no sense to this book whatsoever. And uh, and we can just divest ourselves of it completely. Totally. And if you're, you know, if the Armageddon's coming, I would not invest in cup futures. I guess is all I can say. So let's move the fuck on, please. <laughs> 